Hello everyone, and welcome to another Fire Carry Guide. Today, our episode 6.3, we're looking at advanced fighter control. So there are a number of topics here that we want to cover. Elements such as team support, luring, baits, uh, mainly with, uh, with regards to strafes, uh, first fighter contact, what do you do when your fighters are going to engage the enemy fighters, uh, advanced uh, exit strafes, what we can do with the new exit strafing mechanic and how we can make it work for us. Uh, and uh, then a little bit about uh, bomber escort, what we can do to, uh, if we're going to protect our bombers and how we protect them so we can get on target. So with that said, let's have a look on our classroom again. So here we are in our WOWS training room. First thing we want to look at and talk about is sight denial. Now we've talked about sight denial in uh, episode 5 with plane control, so we're just going to lightly top, uh, cover the topic again today. On this map, which is shards, there's a central capture point which is quite large. We know that our destroyer is going to go in for the capture point, and we do not want this destroyer to be spotted. As a result, the enemy carrier may be using a dive bomber to scout first, or maybe he's using his own fighters. In this scenario, we want to create a rally point ahead of our destroyer that will block the enemy dive bomber from spotting the destroyer so that he can get the cap. That's basic sight denial. If there are enemy fighters, we are looking to keep the standoff range just outside of the destroyer's detection range. Or at the very least until the destroyer can get in a position where he is out of line of sight to enemy ships and gunfire. If an enemy destroyer moves up, we can fall back once we've got our guy in safe position. But sight denial can have various uses, uh, but it's really just um, creating a fog of war for the enemy, so they can't see what your intentions are, what your ships are doing, or at the very least you're mitigating damage that your ships can uh, take because you're preventing sight. Now, this may happen at the beginning of the battle, or it may just happen uh, much later in the game. If, if we're late end game and the enemy carrier is attacking our destroyer, then it makes sense if you want to try and help him, but alternatively, if he's just loitering with planes uh, to scout, the dive bombers may be faster than your fighters, but at the very least you want to create a field where you can deny the bomber, scare him off, and simply allow, in this instance, a shore, but it could be any other ship trying to be in stealth, the ability to go hidden so that he can survive. And uh, in close games, that one ship from your team that can escape is points the enemy don't get, and he can also come back into the game and have an influence later. The other element in Team Swore I want to talk about today is preventing fighter locks so that's when one fighter tags another fighter so that the enemy can then bomb your friendly ships or even yourself i suppose in a carry snipe situation which we'll talk about in a future episode so in this particular instance let's say we have a battleship who is sailing uh perhaps he does not have a defensive fire or his friend who has a defensive fire was sunk now it is in the enemy carrier's best interests to lure away your fighters as best as possible. I mean, the enemy carrier wants to attack this battleship without having to worry about you messing around or intercepting him. So he will try his best, if he's a good player, and this is what I would do, I would try and, uh, a, you know, offer combat, even in unfavorable circumstances, i.e. over hostile and anti-air elsewhere, so that I can engage the fighters, lock on, and allow my bombers to approach from an alternate direction and attack the battleship. Now, if you know this is going to happen, then you slowly want to block the avenues of uh, approach for the bombers and the fighters. You don't want to engage them unless you feel extremely confident or if you've got, you outnumber his uh, planes three to two, three waves to two waves, that type of thing. If you've got a clear superiority where you can lock them on and then you have a third wave to engage the bombers. What you want to do is fall back slowly to the battleship's AA bubble and at the same time making him aware of through communication, which we spoke about in episode four, with regards to, hey, there are bombers incoming, pay attention, I want you to use your AA on them as well. We reach the critical point where if the enemy carrier truly wants to commit on our battleship, he will now have to fly his fighters inside the AA bubble of our battleship. Now, the battleship, if he's smart, is actually going to focus fire his manual fire control AA on the torpedo bombers because they're the biggest threat, but we now have an advantage when it comes to our fighter duel. By luring back, we also want to be able so that we don't just get tagged and we're not able to turn around. What we want to do 
is as we get to our friendly battleship and we're loitering slightly behind him, so we're luring the enemy fighters as close as possible, we want to be able to have the ability to barrage. We want to be able to turn and if possible, barrage through the fighters into enemy bombers as they approach our um, friendly battleship. So we know our fighters are going to get tagged, but we want at least one good barrage. And we're going to try and clip as many planes as we possibly can, specifically the bombers. If we can wound the bombers, that's great. If we cause the bombers to loiter longer inside the enemy battleship's AA bubble, every little helps because they might shoot down a plane. And in the worst possible case scenario, let's say we don't get the strafe off or we don't hit his bombers, but he chooses to engage his fighters over his friendly ship then we can um and the bombers go in for the attack and does damage well at the very least although the battleship may have died due to the attack we have won the fighter duel due to the friendly a of the battleship assuming equal all things being equal you know equal number of planes at the beginning of the duel and the strafes no one you know picked each other off we'll win this fighter engagement so that the next time we fight uh, we're going to have an advantage over a longer game now, another thing we can do about is advanced exit strafes, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes, but if we choose to engage the enemy fighters at close range uh, next to our battleship, well, then the enemy carrier, if he wants to bomb, has to get in close, and then we can use an exit strafe, even though we're going to lose a plane, through the enemy bomber's approach line and damage him that way, so that it's dangerous for the enemy carrier to send his bombers at the battleship because he risks being exit strafes because if you aren't aware, exit strafes actually do damage. So that is team support, sight denial, uh, preventing lock-ons, knowing how to protect a ship that you know is going to be attacked, and the enemy carrier has a uh, fighter escort. I mean, this goes into bomber escort, which we're talking about at the end of this video. It's in the same uh, kind of approach. If the enemy carrier is good, i.e. us, uh, then you know they will stay back and you know that they will engage at the last possible moment, and we know that they're going to strafe through. This is a very difficult target to attack. You realistically want to maybe find something else, but if you have to attack this target, the goal is to try and engage the enemy fighters as far away as possible as the uh, enemy target, in this case our friendly battleship, and then get our bombers in in such a way that we stay outside of the AA bubble as sh as long as possible. Well, we stay inside the AA bubble as short as possible, but also as far away as possible from exit strafes from, you know, the defending fighter plane. So that's team support elements. Uh, now let's talk about some lures, baits and strafes. So there are two elements here that we want to talk about. One is if we have our fighters and the hostile carrier ca uh, fighters loitering sort of dancing on a sort of uh, an imaginary combat line you know just outside the aa field of, of both teams so our imaginary friendly ships aa bubble is such we want to give the appearance that our fighters are perhaps inactive and loitering you know we've, we don't actively control them we don't have them going back and forth on waypoints we don't have them doing anything fancy we have them loitering or we're trying to entice the enemy uh, carrier to come in and strafe our fighters. We want him to come in and attack our fighter planes. And this doesn't happen every time. Normally it's with lesser uh, capability players do this so they can get lured in. But if they do want to come in and, the, and specifically they want to strafe you because you're giving the feign that you're not controlling them, at the last moment you can pull away, the fighter strafes right past because they have no control, goes all the way in, and at that point you can do two things. One, you can counter strafe. Or two, you can then simply tag the enemy fighters. You've tagged the enemy fighters, it's a fair duel, however, because you have baited the enemy planes to strafe into you or come closer, they're now well within the AA bubble of the friendly ships. And if he wants to exit, he has to exit strafe, upon which you can fall if you want to, and he's already at least one plane down. Another thing with regards to strafe baiting is if we are playing, for example, a Strike Lexington, which has, at the moment, has a version 6.4, three dive bombers and one torpedo bomber, or it doesn't need to be a Strike Lexington, it can be a scenario where we do not have fighters at this particular point, perhaps you have no ammunition, perhaps they're reloading. The enemy fighter planes are chasing our dive bomber, and they're getting close. They're at that point where, hey, if he strafes these from behind, they're probably going to die. 
you know, he's reached the that sweet spot where as soon as he strafes now, he kills everything. And you kind of get this from experience when you're playing in-game. If that's about to happen, you can do one of two maneuvers. First things, if he's got fighters chasing your entire wave, split up your wave. So you have uh, going in four different directions, make it difficult so he can't strafe all four of your bomber waves. Now, if you're going to attack a target, spread out and then reconvene. Or if you're running back to your own carrier, well, your, your bombers are going to be faster regardless. But if you're just basically trying to evade enemy fighters, first thing is when the dive bomber is getting close, you can juke off to one side. The fighter will keep strafing through. You might lose one or two planes from a clip, but most of the wave may survive. And then he's going to have to re-engage and chase again. Another technique is rather than kind of going off at an angle is to do an extremely sharp double turn right back so the strafe will avoid and then you'll have to come chase and you can avoid taking all damage and this comes with a gut reaction. He's following you, you know he's in the control of his planes, is he going to strafe? Because if you make a hard turn and he doesn't strafe he immediately just tags them. If you're using large bombers, if you're using expert rear gunner or large waves, being tagged maybe isn't so bad because honestly that gives your fighters a chance to fight back because they can actually actively then shoot the fighters if he chooses to tag. If it's a Japanese carry player and it's large American bomber waves, his objective is to strafe, if possible, your planes because it's the most efficient way of killing them all off. So what I'm trying to say is spread the planes out if possible. You can choose to juke off to one side. It's less forgiving if... Um, when, as and when he strafes because you're not immediately caught or alternatively you can hard double back on yourself and the fighter will shoot way past. So that's known as, for me that's known as, as the word juking where you're gonna go in, you're gonna strafe the enemy uh, sh um, carrier's planes and then at the last moment he moves his bombers and your fighters go straight past and you lose control and it creates a window where his planes can then escape because while this fighter is coming down you've double duked with the bomber and you can then run away as best you can and it's going to take a while for that fighter to catch up again and you can repeat the process all over and if you are a good Lexington strike carrier player or you have good bomber control if the enemy carrier keeps trying to strafe and you are good with your dukes you will bleed the, the fighter dry because it only has three good strafes in it. So if you're very good with the manipulation of your four bombers and he only has two fighters, you can, as I say, um, cause him a lot of havoc if he's trying to kill your plane waves from behind before you get to his target. The next topic today we want to talk about is the first fighter contact. So this is when your fighters are going to fight the enemy fighters. How do you approach? How do you make it so that they engage? Right? How do you lock on? So there are two ways of going about this. In the center, we have if it's going to be a head-on engagement and there isn't really much flexibility to go left or right because of maybe AA fields or the edge of the map or things like that, then if we know we're going to have a head-on engagement and we have spare ammunition for a barrage and fighting afterwards, we barrage. We always barrage head-on. A head-on barrage will kill a plane usually always a plane and sometimes in much larger fighter waves such as the American ones with seven they may kill two uh, planes of the enemy team once the fighters go past each other and usually you'll find that the enemy guy the carrier will do the exact same thing he'll also strafe you should theoretically be on the same number of planes which is why it's not favorable because you don't want to lose planes in the first place you'll turn around and then you relock on and you, you engage the fighters are now tagged but you want to do the head-on strafe now there are exceptions to this rule because what you don't want to do is strafe past an enemy fighter on a head-on engagement. Find yourself now inside the AA envelope of an enemy ship, just as we were talking earlier in our team support scenario, or sorry, in our lures and baits, where we get we lure a ship in. We um we don't want to strafe through and then inside the AA bubble of an enemy ship. So this is more of a scenario where if you know it's safe to strafe um, and you know there's no hostile AA that you're aware of uh, to the south or you know to, to the other side of the fires that you're going through, then it's safe to engage. Uh, it, no one gets necessarily an advantage. Planes then engage after each other strafe each other and we can take it from there. Another engagement method that I typically favor if I don't want to strafe is if the enemy fighters are coming in from one direction, I will duke over to one side. That means if he has a strafe locked in, he will lock and strafe straight through. Alternatively, the carrier player then has to readjust his strafe mechanic off to one side. So it's making it harder for him to strafe, 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 you know, in to 
uh, to lock in the strafe because then the planes may fly in a circle as they try and then change their trajectory and that means I can then move in and I can tag the fighter. That's assuming I want to tag the fighter and not necessarily strafe him or if I want to bait a strafe from the enemy fighter itself allowing him to be lured into perhaps a friendly AA bubble which I can then come around and then tag him to keep him in that area. On the right, um, here we're talking about uh, dodging a strafe and then knowing that that fighter is locked into its current flight path and abusing it and then counter strafing. So in this particular instance, we know the fighter's coming on and we're offering a head on engagement like this middle example. And then at the last minute, we pull away off to the side. The fighter begins the strafe mechanic and then we immediately turn around. And as the fighter's progressing forward, just before he exits his strafe, we then strafe into him and then clip. Now, if the carrier player is good, he'll try and maneuver his fighter away as quickly as possible because he knows he's vulnerable. So we dodge, turn around, and then we strafe the plane from behind. We know that this guy's locked into his strafe. He can't change his positioning, which makes him a sitting target for us to get him from behind. So there are options. If you see what the enemy player is doing, if you know that, hey, I bet he's going to strafe, you can pull away about half a second beforehand. The strafe gets locked in, you turn around, you catch him from behind. So these are like some advanced kind of first contact uh, maneuvers that you can do, whether you strafe head on, whether you duke over to the side and then engage, or whether you rotate around in a sort of a 360 circle after an enemy strafe and then catching them from behind. <clears throat> so the next element we want to talk about is exit strafes. Now exit strafes work when two fighters are tagged together and we use the alt attack and then the fighter uses up fuel or ammunition as it were I should say um, to break away from the fighter duel, the locking. Unless you're a Saipan, every other carrier will lose a plane by default. You need ammunition to do an exit strafe and you need at least two planes in your plane wave. Now, we've spoken about exit strafes briefly in episode 5, but here we're going to look into a number of examples of how we can make extra use of our exit strafes. Step number one, we have a fighter plane, one fighter plane, and we currently are tagged and engaged with an enemy fighter plane. Maybe it's a fair fight, maybe it's not. Maybe there are two or three hostile fighters fighting our one fighter. It could be a Kiryu against a Saipan game. It could be any you know, tier 9, 10 game where sometimes you come across players that use triple fighter. That's fine. Normally, the old tactic before exit strafes become an issue is to lock on to as many fighters as possible with one wave and then strafe with a second wave and killing as many planes as possible including your own wave. It's a bit of friendly fire on your own planes, but you get something out of it. Now, we can lock with as many possible planes with our first wave, and as long as we're quick about this, because he's gonna die quite quickly, he exit strafes out, and as the exit strafe leaves the encounter, the planes that were locked onto our fighter, they become dumbstruck. They don't move, they don't follow, they're, they, they just loiter as it were, and it's up to the enemy carrier to control them. At this point, we already have the second wave strafing in, and if you're really good, the exit strafe, the plane just leaves the, uh, the kind of um, damage zone as the second wave piles in. And this way, provided we're quick about it, that our first wave will be down a plane, but should have some combat strength. We've severely wounded the enemy uh, carrier's planes, maybe even killed them all off, and we can turn around and we can re-engage. So that is um, tagging with one wave, barraging with the second wave, and just before the barrage hits, exit strafing with the first wave, so we minimize the damage that we take to the first wave. Another option that we can possibly do, and this is highly situational, is if we have two fighter planes, uh, engaging each other in combat. Perhaps we have a really strong wave. Maybe our, t our first wave on the left here is a group of a wave of five, and down at the bottom is like a group of one or two. Maybe it's a weak wave. And on the right hand side, maybe we only have a fighter uh, wave of one or two against his enemy plane wave of four or five, right? So we're kind of mix matched. What we can do with the stronger wave, we can actually exit strafe out into the other fighter duel because exit strafes do damage and by exit strafing out yes we lose a plane and we'd only do this in a scenario where the wave was strong by exit strafing out we can we can disengage the smaller wave maybe leaving a field of hostile or something but we also then severely damage the enemy wave will probably kill our own plane off because I don't think we can exit with them but if you can exit then again you can combine what we've learned in the first example to exit out 
and to exit into it's like a double exit if that makes sense the first wave into the second wave damaging the second wave and our second wave escaping and the second hostile wave being attacked so you have to think the exit strafe isn't purely an escape tool it can also be an offensive tool this is what makes the saipan very powerful because the saipan does not lose a plane on an exit strafe which means you can abuse this quite heavily our next example here is if we have two fighters engaging each other, or even it's just a single fighter in a fighter duo and a lock-on, and we spoke about this briefly in uh, team support, if we're locked on and we have bombers that are flying past us, uh, specifically past our fighters within a barrage range, going for a target, or just they're, lo they're flying past because they think our fighters are uh, currently detained, which was the case before exit strafe became an issue, or, or it became a thing in the patch, we can exit strafe out of the fighter duo. Now, this is bad because we know that we'll probably lose the fighter duel, but if the important thing here isn't to win the fighter duel, but to punish the enemy carrier and wound his planes, then we can exit strafe out into the bomber's flight path, especially if he's got them clumped up, and wound as many bombers as possible to help our team by reducing the enemy carrier's bomb attack, you know, strike power uh, for against our ships. And lastly, this is uh, another situational tool. If you are tagged onto an enemy fighter, <clears throat> and we know that the enemy fighter wants to break away. Maybe he's inside your friendly AA field. Maybe he just realizes, I'm not going to win this fight. Maybe he sees you bringing in a second fighter. He's like, you know what? I'm going to exit strafe. If you can anticipate the direction that the enemy fighter will exit strafe, because you know maybe there's islands or land masses or AA, or he doesn't want to go in any direction other than the direction we're pointing with our arrow, and you know he's going to be exit strafe, you wait and you watch. And the moment your plane starts to twitch and loiter, or you start to see the graphical element of the barrage, and he starts flying away, you take control of your plane, you tell it to move first, because if you attempt to tell your plane to strafe while an exit strafe is happening from an enemy fighter plane, it won't work. It won't work until the enemy fighter exits its exit strafe, then you can start telling your fighter to strafe. It's uh, like an aggressive strafe, not an, not an exit strafe. So what you need to do is when you know the guy's about to break and he does the, uh, he does the kind of the graphical movement or you feel that he's broken off and the, you know, between the latency of the server and himself, he's starting to moving away, you can tell your plane to move in the direction of the carrier. And then as we learned in the advanced bomber control where we showed, um, unavoidable strikes. There was a sequence where we showed how to do extremely close range locked in strafes. So we lock in an ultra tight strafe range by moving and then we do a chasing strafe. So if you're wondering what I'm talking about, go have back to episode 6.1 where we talk about unavoidable uh, torpedo bomber strikes in that video. I believe it's at the end and we show you how to do lock in torpedo bomber attacks and fighter plane uh, wave you know, very close lock-in so you can lock in a strafe quickly before the plane circling so that we can chase after the enemy fighter and while the enemy fighter is currently stuck in its exit strafe your offensive strafe can catch it from behind and kill it right and then the guess the last topic we want to talk about here is bomber escort but we did talk about that in team support when we are escorting bombers and let's say for example currently we are t uh, the red team carrier here if our objective is this battleship, then we know the enemy has fighter planes, so we create a protective barrier. We stay outside the AA field because we're looking to get a good approach run on the enemy battleship, in this team, the green team carrier, uh, sorry, green team battleship. So we use our fighters as a protective screen. If he wants to get to our bombers, he has to go through the fighters. We group up the bombers and we keep them somewhat out of range so he can't strafe through our fighters into the bombers and we make it so that if the enemy fighter planes want to engage the, the bombers we'll make them a target we'll make them a bait so that perhaps you'll fly away because the goal here is to lure the fighters away from his protection the carrier may not be intentionally protecting the friendly battleship or the green battleship in this instance however we want to lure him away now if he does not get lured away uh, we are looking for what is the best approach? How do I attack this battleship? Is the best approach to come from the south? Well, if that's the case, then we'll have our planes start coming from the south. We'll do a protective screen. We'll try and lure the fighters away and create ourselves an opening, being careful of exit strafes. Or at the very least, perhaps we can try and engage the fighters away, even in a disadvantaged situation, and give ourselves an opportunity to move in and to get an attack on our target, the battleship. 
gets quite micro heavy. You have to then be aware, even though you've tagged the enemy fighters perhaps, or you've strafed them, you have to be aware he may exit strafe and then go for your bombers. So there's a lot of concentration that happens when you're bombing an enemy ship, especially one that is being protected by fighters. Now, we're probably going to cover this topic, uh, bomber escorting, a little bit more when we talk about uh, sniping enemy carriers and surviving carrier snipes in, in episodes 6.6 .6 and 6.7. So we'll come back to that in another episode, perhaps in slightly more detail with perhaps some video uh, kind of proof or backing up evidence, which I know I've got a clip for. Okay, well, anyway, guys, uh, that is it for our classroom lesson for um, advanced fighter control. Rather than going into a random battle and just seeing what develops as we've done in previous episodes, uh, in the World of Warships uh, aircraft carrier forums and also additional playlists here on YouTube, we'll be putting additional snippets in so there are uh, links to each of the topics covered in Advanced Fire Control as I make them and they become available so that you can look in detail to... Um, real world examples rather than me just talking about it us being in game and me showing you what i'm doing and how i'm doing it with exactly how we've done in the classroom and these uh, links will either be in a playlist on youtube or they'll be on the wilds uh, uh, world of warships aircraft carrier guide forums where we'll have links in so people can see directly like small one two minute clips uh, what it is we're talking about anyway as we said that's the end of uh, episode 6.3, Advanced Fire Control for Advanced Tactics or Fire's Carry Guide. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, our next episode will probably cover uh, Advanced Scouting at 6.4, and then we'll also do an episode on 6.5 about flight deck management, among some other topics. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.